Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. I'm a quick study. I've never met a stranger, so I uh, have, you know, know how to build relationships. I believe in the wisdom of the crowds, and I think the answers are already here. I don't think anyone who comes in comes in with a cape and a magic wand. They uh, come in to coalesce around a, uh, a, hopefully, a common vision that takes them some time to uh, cultivate. And that's exactly what Omaha Public Schools' new superintendent, Dr. Cheryl Logan, is doing. Good morning, I'm Rob McCartney. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. And this morning, we'll be talking with Dr. Cheryl Logan, who's been on the job for three weeks now. Before we talk with her, though, a little background. The board hired her January 30th. She was working in the Philadelphia School District as the chief academic officer. She's also been assistant superintendent for Philadelphia Public Schools, an elementary and high school principal in Maryland, as well as a foreign language and ESL instructor. She's also fluent in Spanish. And for the past 21 days, she's been leading Nebraska's largest school district. OPS has 63 elementary schools, 12 middle schools, 7 high schools, a virtual school, 13 alternative programs. The district is the third largest employer in the state with more than 7,000 full-time employees. They're responsible for more than 52,000 plus students who speak 120 languages and more. And if that's not a daunting enough task, the district is building five new schools and has an extremely tight budget. Superintendent Logan warns of an impact this fall. I spoke with her from her new office the day after she first took the reins, and she told me they're going to cut about 180 positions, of which 100 will be unfilled paraprofessional jobs. That is likely to have an impact in, in our schools, and we are reconfiguring the staffing to make sure that our most needy schools and obviously our most vulnerable students have to continue to have those supports. But there, there will be an impact somewhere. And she says they'll talk with school leaders, teachers and parents this fall to reassess what needs to happen next. And you can see that earlier interview in its entirety right now on KETV.com. So to continue that discussion, now OPS Superintendent Dr. Cheryl Logan's here this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you. Good morning. So first, tell me, how has it gone so far, the first few weeks? Well, I've had about uh, 14 days on the job, mm -hmm. and uh, not to include weekends, and I do have some events, uh, seems like every weekend, which right. is fine. I, I was expecting that. Mm -hmm. It's going well. I think that there are, uh, continue to listen to people. I've actually spent quite a bit of time in Lincoln getting to meet senators. I've met the governor, uh, met with the uh, OSERS board, mm -hmm. uh, and, and several others, and so it's been great. Yeah, you're going to need people in Lincoln quite a bit over the years, as you, you find. Uh, you have what we what you call a 90-day entry plan. I do. Uh, let's touch on, you had four goals that you set out. Let's mm -hmm. touch on those briefly. First off was relationship with the school board. What and why? Well, you know, this is uh, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, that's um, who sets the policy mm -hmm. and uh, the direction and uh, uh, vision for the district, you know, in collaboration with the superintendent and her staff. I think that uh, having a positive relation with the school board and understanding what it is that they expect, because they represent the 53,000 students and their families, is will be key uh, for me being able to accomplish the things that uh, I think we need to accomplish it along with my team. And that understanding uh, the constituency from their point of view, understanding what it is that uh, they bring to the table and their interest is something that will serve me well uh, as superintendent. I know that uh, human relationships take time to tend, mm -hmm. and so I've been tending to those uh, through a uh, board retreat, which we had right prior to my start, and then individual meetings. I've already had two. I have the, the next set start next week uh, with them, and I actually think I've actually started round three now that I think about it, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's been, it's been so far, been, it's been good, and I think that uh, the board is open to my leadership, and I am certainly listening to um, to them as well. Okay. And nurturing those relationships, your second point is building trust with parents, taxpayers. You call them stakeholder groups, understandably. Uh, transparency is always a word that comes up. Beyond that, is it also accessibility? I think it's both. I think that people want to be able to see their superintendent, especially because I'm not from Omaha. I'm a, a little bit of a mystery. I think that it's going to be sad when they find out there's really not that much behind the curtain. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm just a, I'm a school teacher from Maryland who now happens to be the superintendent in Omaha. 
and I will laugh because the other day I was in Walmart. I, it was 6.30 in the morning and I'm walking in and a guy looks over at me and says, hey, uh, uh, you're, you're the new superintendent. And I said, yes, I am. And, and uh, he's a teacher at Springville Elementary School. And, you know, we talked about the fact that I had been there. And he says, well, well, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm getting some stuff just like you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's those kinds of uh, interactions and opportunities to meet people because, you know, we're all the same. We, I have a different job than he has, obviously, mm -hmm. but I you know, have the same needs for stuff at Walmart at 6.30 in the morning like he does. Right. Your third point, uh, examine current teaching practices and student performances, basically. What do you want to do there? There, I want to be able to not just look at what the student data says. I want to be able to look at who has access to advanced programs. Mm -hmm. I want to see who's in gifted programs. I want to be able to see how our English language learners are progressing. I want to be able to see our, our special education students meeting their uh, goals of their individual education plans. I look at it kind of broadly. I also want to look at our arts programs. I have been able to enjoy the uh, uh, two uh, productions. I saw Bye Bye Birdie and uh, Once on This Island uh, during the summer. And to watch the young people and their excitement about those programs, I was able to see uh, the students, ninth, incoming ninth grade students at UNO last Friday as they uh, made docu documentary films mm -hmm. about um, history of local people whose, whose histories are often invisible. And I just thought about, wow, what a great opportunity for them to not just learn about the technical aspects of documentary filmmaking, but to about, learn about people in their community that have been living right beside them all of this time um, as they enter high school. Okay, and your fourth, fourth point actually springs board me into what I want to talk about also in this, this show today. You say study the district's fiscal health and organizational health. We're talking, the budget is obviously the huge issue facing the, the schools right now, one of them. Uh, we talked about job cuts, and that's in that interview we did earlier, and the unfilled para positions. There, you mentioned there will be an impact somewhere. Have any idea where that impact will be and what it'll be? I think... It might, I think initially it might appear to schools in service or the speed of service that they are receiving from central office and that there are less people to do some of the, the jobs. For example, you know, if you cut uh, a person who's mowing the grass, you know, the grass still grows and it's been rainy and hot. I think they will notice uh, things like that. And while that can seem like something that's minimal, it's not to a little kid who wants to go outside and play, you know, at recess. It's not certainly not to the football coach who needs to get the team out there to practice. And I think that there are uh, other ways that people will notice uh, the decrease in the number of staff. Obviously, with the paraprofessionals, uh, the, the number of paraprofessionals has decreased. And so we want to make sure we shifted the number of slots to schools that have the students with the highest uh, uh, number of needs. And I think some of the schools that maybe are, will not have one will notice that. And so we'll be talking to our school leaders, uh, to our teachers, of course, and our parents and students about how they're feeling the impact of mm -hmm. the budget cuts, because I think they will be able to tell, they certainly will be able to tell uh, us better than I probably will be able to see from my vantage point. Is there anything else that's expendable besides the jobs positions. I know you told me before that it's such a major part of the budget comes from mm -hmm. employees. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you could have gone? I'm not sure yet. With? I'm mm -hmm. not sure yet. I think there are always efficiencies in a budget mm -hmm. that's almost a billion dollars. There probably are some efficiencies and it's something that I'm studying. And as I talk with people in different departments and many people have made appointments to come in and kind of tell me where they think efficiencies are. Right. So I'm listening to them. Uh, they, they are giving me good information from their uh, point of view. And I often like triangulate out. If I get a piece of information, I might ask two other people who could be impacted by that mm -hmm. from different vantage points points to kind of get a read on how it's going. Okay. Um, you told me before you're bothered by the cuts. Why? I am always bothered by cuts in public education or public health because those are the things that are game changers for the people who depend on public education or public health the most. I know that in communities where uh, there is great, um, there are well-funded schools, 
they have a lot of really, really great results. Now, I will say the schools here continue to be well funded. And we aren't at that, we, I, we, we aren't at a point where uh, we don't have support. We have tremendous community support for schools. And I know that just because of my entry and the way that people have uh, greeted me. I know that they're, you know, maybe excited for some other reasons, but I, I know that it's fundamentally it's about their children. And so an uh, individual who works here at your station has an incoming freshman at Burke. Mm -hmm. And just the way she talked about my visibility and how important it was for her as a parent mm -hmm. is something that I know real, not just represents, you know, her, you know, it, me, right. it represents her fundamental belief that uh, Burke is going to provide the opportunity that she wants for her uh, daughter mm -hmm. to be ready to meet post-secondary challenges. Well, a lot of parents, I mean, almost every parent I know is, is highly invested in their child. Mm -hmm. um, and so what grade would you give the district? What would you tell the parents if, you, if they said, hey, grade the district for me, Dr. Logan? Wow, you, you, that's not a softball. That's a pretty hard ball. I, you know, if I was going to grade the district right now, I'd give us a B plus. Okay. I think that we are doing many, many things well. I think that there is some, there's some confidence issues. If I was, mm -hmm. if I'm, uh, and I'm, I am speaking freely right. <laughs> on my own free will, As you should, yeah. uh, that there are some confidence issues that we can work on about, you know, delivering. I think transparency is, I've heard that from many different stakeholders around the decision-making process, how we make these decisions, how we explain these decisions, whether or not we even think we have to explain mm -hmm. the decisions. And you have to listen, even if you, you know, if it's hard, because everybody at, who works for the district, I believe, is working hard. You have to listen to people because that's their lived, lived experience and try to figure out from their perspective where we're falling short and go from there. Okay. Well, it's, it's time for us to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion, conversation with Omaha's new superintendent, including issues like school performance and where we go from here. You're watching KETV News, Watch 7's Chronicle. Welcome to Omaha Public Schools. Uh, Dr. Logan has been superintendent for about almost 40 hours um, and uh, is hitting the ground running. I tried to get a meeting this morning with her at 7 a.m. and she was already booked. So uh, welcome, Dr. Logan. Uh, you have settled in well and the transition went smoothly. And uh, I just want to say thank you for choosing OPS to help us move forward. Dr. Logan. Thank you. Good after, uh, Good evening, everyone. Good evening, President Snow, Vice President uh, America and Board of Education, and uh, everyone here in the audience today, and especially the staff who is here uh, this afternoon. Uh, really appreciate you being here uh, to support me this evening. And that was Omaha Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Cheryl Logan's first school board meeting. By all accounts, it was basically a love fest. Everybody was happy there. And joining me this morning is Dr. Logan. You, you actually call it people using their company manners. Explain that, and you know it's not going to last. Well, I'll take it while it, while it comes. Okay. Uh, I think, your, you know, your company manners are just, you know, when your company comes over, you clean up. Uh, right. You make sure uh, you, you should take out your fine china, those kinds of things. Uh, if you have fine, I don't even own fine china, so I don't <laughs> know why I say that. Right. Uh, so I think that uh, as, as people, when I ask questions, people are, are really super polite and sometimes may hold back. Uh, and, and not be as candid. And so I've tried to use some probing questions to help them with their candor. And it's it something that takes time because as much as I say I want to hear it, not all people, leaders say that all the time. And then when they hear it, they, they react in a way that is negative or uh, the person may feel like they're at risk. And so that will take some time. I have some folks who come in right away and been really candid, but for the most part, people are using their company manners. Okay, and you actually uh, said you're going to have weekly meetings starting July 9th. We're beyond that now. Mm -hmm. Anything come out of those meetings? Well, the first meeting, yes, a big thing came out of the, the first meeting. And uh, we had our first meeting with its transportation, all the major divisions. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we noticed was we send out, transportation sends out this communication around their uh, dry run day. And what we noticed was that the day that they have that is a day when the teachers aren't in the building because they're off doing these other things. So there was always this confusion about do the teachers stay, but they're supposed to go to training. And it was just such an easy fix. So uh, those two departments met together. And actually, the letter that they issued to principals today was jointly sent. And that whole right hand talking to the left hand is something that I hope to bring uh, to the district. 
as a teacher, that was something that drove me insane. Like, don't they know that this other thing is happening? Right. You know, they're in the same building. It's a communication issue. It's a issue. communication right. issue. And I think that that's one of the things that came out. And then we also realized that we were much further along uh, with our uh, preparation. Mm -hmm. Some media trainings happening for folks who are in transportation because they'll be on the ask answering questions uh, from you fine, fine folks sure. uh, during those initial days. And we, we will meet again, I think it's the 24th, so we skipped, a, we skipped one week and then after the 24th we'll meet weekly until the start of school. Okay, let me ju jump back into the school performance issues. A math plan, needs assessment that's now being implemented, um, it's going to affect how teachers teach, right? Indeed. Yes. How so? Well, the, the math standards have changed dramatically mm -hmm. over the last few years and the new Nebraska College and Career Ready standards really require teachers to think about when they teach teach things at a different time. So a great example is times tables. I love to use that example because we all remember in the third grade being excited about learning their times, students you know, learning our times tables. Well now it's gonna be, kids really need to know them before they leave third grade. Mm -hmm. And that's a, it's a big shift because everything kind of shifted down. And even when I look at our eighth grade uh, some of the, the um, eighth grade standards are now really taught in the sixth grade, especially around algebraic thinking and, uh, um, and some other things. And so those are some of the changes. So it's making teachers aware of this. Their teachers are very smart. You have to make them aware of what the standards are, what the expectations are, and then some ways to think about how the brains of, our, of a 13-year-old in, in eighth grade, how they work and the best ways to, uh, to access uh, students and to motivate them to be excited about math, for example. The, I'm not convinced about the math phobia thing. I, sometimes I think it's a bigger, it's a, it's can, be, can be a red herring. I'm not convinced of that. I think our kids are very, very smart. I watch them do mathematical thinking all the time when they're playing video games because it, 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 a lot of it is geometry, as you know. Yeah, you, they you don't watch, call it that. I know they don't call it yeah. that. They don't realize it, but sometimes helping them understand that they have these skills already. Mm -hmm. This is how they're already applying these skills, and this is how they may. Uh, this there's some other ways that they need to learn how to apply these skills mm -hmm. so they can access them in other areas. You're changing the way absenteeism is going to be measured from whole school to individuals. Why? Well, if you if you because we're concerned about everyone's attendance individually. So if I look at a whole school, I can mask, if I have a lot of kids who attend well, I can mask students who are not attending well in that data. And really it's, why do we look at attendance? The, the reason we look at attendance is because the attendance, school attendance, um, and specifically 95% or higher is so highly correlated with uh, graduation from high school that it's worth attending to. And we see that students who uh, attend school at 95% or higher have an 84% nationally uh, graduation rate. And that will be, if we can get there, that will improve our graduation rate right. um, substantially. And that's why we're attending to it. It's really not just attending, it's why you attend. Right. And the fact that if you are in attendance, you are likely to learn more, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, be ready to uh, meet those post-secondary expectations. But it's really the connection between the 95% uh, the rate and high school graduation that really spurs us on to look at it individual student by sure. student. And so st t schools will get a number, the number of students or the percent of students they have attending at 95% or higher. That's what's really, will really uh, move the needle for not just uh, their school, but for individual children. I wanna ask you about your management style or, or, or you said, you told me before when you were growing up, your father w had the iron fist uh -huh. and your mom's a velvet glove. That's correct. Which one are you? A combination of the two. I think uh, when I was a younger administrator, I was, I, I really was just out there, you know, come on people. And I learned over the years that a velvet glove was a better approach and that I already had the technical skill. That's that, you know, people didn't, people didn't ask me about my technical skill. Sure. 
but it was relating to people and having them buy into my leadership, which that really moved the needle for kids. It helped me have very low, um, uh, low rates of uh, teachers who wanted to leave my school, sure. which is huge, uh, and especially because I, I did run some pretty challenging schools. And that, for me, is something I'm really proud of that growth. As a matter of fact, when I did, I did my Strengths Finder, you know, my Gallup Strengths right. Finder, this year, and I did it 12 years ago, and my top five were really different from 12 years ago, and I knew that that was about my personal growth as a leader and as a human being. I want to talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about uh, Dr. Logan, the person, not necessarily the superintendent. First, so we have a couple comments uh, that came in from last week's show. Several people emailed about the Black Votes Matters tour area high school students took to the South. Stephanie Palladino said shows like this are part of educating us, may help us to quit just shouting at each other, getting nowhere. And if it helps people get out and vote, no matter who they vote for, it's an added bonus. And Sharon Haney wrote, I also had a moment of being there in the moment by watching the footage of the tour. My heart is heavy. My mind is blown. Remember, if you want to be heard, email us. The address news at KETV.com. We'll be right back. You're watching KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. And this morning, we're talking with OPS's new superintendent, Dr. Cheryl Logan. Don't have a lot of time left. We want to do something we call a lightning round, ask you a series of questions to kind of get to know you sure. more than just the superintendent. Let's start with this. Kindle or a real book? Real book. Really? Why? I don't know. I just like the way it feels. I have a Kindle and I mean, I have an iPad. I read no. on my Kindle. I read this morning on my Kindle. I'm, but, I'm with yeah. you too. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay, same here. Uh, what do you do to relax? You said you know when you need to take a break. I, I work out. I like Hallmark movies. Uh, I love Hallmark movies. Like the old love. Christmas coming yeah, over Christmas I, yeah, kind I of could, movies? I, I, last year I watched them so much that I could almost uh, say them uh, You word could probably write word. the scripts. Yeah, I could definitely write the scripts. <laughs> okay, uh, Huskers or Penn State? Huskers. Okay, right answer, I guess. Uh, football, baseball? Football. Okay, favorite food? Uh, I, I eat Thai. I could eat it five days a week. Have you found a good Thai place around here? A Salween Thai on okay. Radio Highway. <laughs> uh, favorite restaurant, is that the same one? It's the same one, okay. yes. Uh, pie or cake? Ooh, ooh, a good pie. I see. Yeah, a good Fruit pie. pie kind of thing? Fruit pie, yeah. Okay, good, yeah. good. Uh, and what's the one thing you want parents, and this isn't a lightning round thing, okay. uh, you want parents, students, everyone to know about Cheryl Logan coming in, a superintendency? A couple things. One, I appreciate the excitement mm -hmm. about um, the, the uh, job. I, I think a couple things. I, one, I'm working really hard to avoid as many landmines as possible, uh, but I'm human. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to hit one. And I want them to think about uh, giving me some grace when, they, when that happens, uh, because I, don't, I, I know I'm going to work hard, and I, I am working hard to, to understand the context. I also want them to know that I, I, I really believe that public education is a game changer. And we have to challenge our students to take advantage of everything that publication, public education has mm -hmm. to offer. And sometimes that means for our parents, sometimes it means saying no. And uh, sometimes it means uh, giving the school grace and understanding the school side when some things happen that we wish, you know, were are less than pleasant. And I also think that um, I encourage them always as well to challenge, to continue to challenge their children. They can't, they always can do more. They will rise to, to your expectations. And I think for me, that's really important. Yeah, I like the way uh, you'd put it before you said your heart on the problem, not on the people. I try. That's what it is. I try. Right. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Logan, thanks very much for joining Thank us today. You. It's been a pleasure and good Thank luck you. to you in the coming years. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, remember, if you missed any part of the show, you want to watch it again, it's online right now. It's at KETV.com. Just go to our homepage, click on the menu button, and look for Chronicle. I'm Rob McCartney. Thanks for watching this morning. We'll see you back here next Sunday for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.